When entering a school in Japan, everyone removes their shoes and puts on slippers. I believe that all manners which are required for people to live together are founded on caring for and respecting each other. People can't live on their own, therefore we must learn how we can strive to improve our lives together as a group. If one person acts selfishly, this affects everyone else. So we encourage the children to think about how we can live in harmony with other people. This means being given duties and responsibilities. North Korea's conventional military forces, the tanks, troops and artillery, are falling increasingly behind the capabilities of South Korea and the U.S. They remain formidable, but in vital areas not paraded on the streets of Pyongyang, the North Soviet hardware is aging. Spare parts are becoming more difficult to secure, according to a U.S. official in Seoul who spoke on background. The official stress North Korea is pursuing a strategy of asymmetric warfare building arsenals of chemical and biological arms while it attempts to build nuclear weapons and the ballistic missiles to deliver it all. The nuclear dimension cannot be underestimated. It really is a game changer because we really don't know how to deal with this anymore. These are political weapons and these are psychological weapons. A visit along the DMZ this week exhibited the familiar tensions. The North Koreans staring down and carefully monitoring every mundane movement. South Korean guards standing at the armistice hut, fists clenched at their sides. But where North Korean workers tend fields inside the DMZ, any conflict that might take shape is more likely to see a North Korean military relying on weapons of mass destruction. The latest strategic assessment by U.S. Forces Korea flatly states that in the event of a major conflict, North Korea would use chemical weapons. Not could, not might, but would. We know uh, what they are capable of even without nuclear weapons. Now that they have this ultimate weapon, uh, we really fear uh, for our safety. <laughs> North Korea's satellite launches said the U.S. official are not attempts to develop a space program with satellites. They are WMD development. With North Korea determined to become a full-fledged nuclear state, there is an urgent need for Washington, Seoul, and Beijing to come up with a new strategy. We have to think of some different way. We can't simply go back to six-party talks. Uh, we can't just go back to, to, to negotiations. Uh, something has to give. A nuclear deterrent in South Korea may be unavoidable. While Pyongyang can't think its conventional forces can overwhelm the South, Kim Jong-un may believe that with a nuclear weapon in hand, he won't have to. Jim Clancy, CNN Seoul. We don't test any of our products on animals. We use Filipino children. <laughs>
That's the latest joke that has outraged Filipinos online. Comedian Catherine Ryan drew flack from netizens after a clip of her joke on the BBC show called Mock the Week has gone viral. Ryan made the joke during the show's segment, Unlikely Lines, from a cosmetics commercial. We don't test any of our products on animals. We use Filipino children. <laughs> Some even called the comedian as racist, saying that the joke was not funny at all. Catherine Ryan turned to Twitter and said that the joke was taken out of context. You might feel that I was criticizing the exploitation of children. The joke is never ever on children. Watch the show, the comedian added. It's not the first time that a BBC show has come under fire because of how it portrayed Filipinos. In 2008, Filipinos called the Harry and Paul BBC show as, quote, disgraceful and distasteful after it showed a comedy sketch in which a man was urged to, quote, mount a Filipina maid. Back in late 2008, the Foreign Affairs Department even summoned the British ambassador to the Philippines to discuss the matter. A BBC spokesperson later on said that the sketch was not intended to demean or upset any viewer. Reporting from Manila, the Philippines, I am Jarek Pena.